Gary Pasco is joined here by John Jackson with a Holiday Bowl preview. JJ, it seemed like it's been forever since the Trojans were on the field with the victory against Notre Dame. Talk about the excitement getting ready for this bowl game. Well, it's exciting because it's Nebraska. I think that you know you have two you know obviously great teams known nationally that get to get to get to square off. For Trojan fans of the court, the game being down in San Diego is exciting. So there'll be a lot of Trojan fans that will travel down you know for the game. Um, but the big thing is also the you know is get USC football. And so you know the fact that it's after Christmas, everybody gets to enjoy their Christmas. It'll be before New Year's, so everybody get to enjoy their New Year's. It's a great holiday season. Yeah, first trip ever to the Holiday Bowl, obviously for the Trojans. 10,000 tickets sold and gone. The Trojans will be there. But I think you hit on the head, JJ. The fact that it's Nebraska, a very nice matchup. When you look at the numbers across the board for these two teams, very similar. Let's start off on the Trojan offense first. Going against a Nebraska defensive front that the USC coaches have said could be the best they faced all season. Yeah, this is no question going to be the best defensive front. They'll probably have three guys that will play in the NFL on that defensive front, and they're tall and they're lanky and they, they're physical and Nebraska football has always been physical and so the Trojans who have, of course pride themselves on being a run first team trying to establish the run they're gonna have their work cut out for them um, you know in terms of trying to move those guys on the defensive line they're gonna have to do it because you don't want Nebraska to turn you one dimensional you want to have some sense of balance uh, but I think if there is a strength that's gonna have to come in the passing game. And Randy Gregory being one of those guys in the Nebraska defensive line. He and Leonard Williams expected to be two of the top five draft picks in the NFL next year. But you talk about don't make SC offense one-dimensional. There are plenty of skill weapons out there for Cody Kessler at his disposal. And if there's anywhere that the Nebraska defense is a little vulnerable, it's in their back seven. I see that being a key point for the Trojans to take advantage. Yeah, if there's one matchup that matchup advantage the Trojans have, it's going to be the receivers against Nebraska's secondary. They haven't seen, you know, what they're going to face. I mean, you know, the one thing with Nebraska is that, you know, they're in a, a you know, a competitive conversation conference, but the Pac-12 conference just brings that passing open, wide open offensive element, whether it be three receivers, four receivers, five receivers, a guy, a lot of guys moving, the motion, three by ones and you know two by two different formations. So the Trojans are gonna have an advantage in, in from that aspect. It's gonna be a lot for the Nebraska secondary to be to be honest with you, to be able to try to defend against it. Because the Trojans do so many things, whether it be horizontally and vertically, it's gonna be something Nebraska hasn't seen this year, so it'll be interesting to see how they adjust. And then let's look on the other side of the ball with the USC defense against the Nebraska offense. Now I know people are gonna say there's some elements of a spread option right now and they have a good quarterback in Tommy Armstrong but let's not make any mistake this current Husker offense Amir Abdullah <laughs> terrific running back how he goes is how that Husker offense is going to go. I think this is going to be the best running back all around the Trojans have faced you know throughout the entire year in terms of you know, he has great at top end speed, so if he gets to the secondary, he can go the distance. But he's also very physical, and they play a physical brand of football. So the defensive front seven for the Trojans is definitely going to be challenged, you know. But, you know, I'm, I, I like our chances. I like Leonard Williams, of course, in the middle. Uh, you know, so the, the one thing that the Trojans got to do is they're going to have to stop the run. They're going to have to be solid because this is going to be the toughest test, in my opinion, against a solid run game. Awfully nice to have number 94 in the middle, but enjoy it for one more game. <laughs> right, right, right. And let's talk about one of the other things about these bowl practices, uh, the the opportunity to get younger players some reps when you're talking about the three weeks of bowl practice leading up to the game. We've seen that this year. Guys like Lamont Simmons, Chris Brown, Malik Dorton, that Coach Sarkeesian has said, hey, these guys have taken advantage of getting extended reps in the bowl sessions. Well, one of the things that was a big advantage for the Trojans this year, but remember when we were on sanctions when they weren't going to bowl games, was really a true disadvantage was you get the, those young players that might not have had a lot of attention paid to them during the year, some opportunity to get some reps. And remember, it's all about practice for these guys in order to, in order to get better. So if you can get to a bowl game, which the Trojans have, you buy yourself one more month of practice. Mm -hmm. So as opposed to having players out there from you know August you know, to November for those four months, now you get that extra month of practice. And that is really valuable for the coaches, especially going forward, because some of these guys, a lot of these guys, they're going to have to count on next year. And that's our report here from the John McKay Center. For John Jackson, this is Gary Pasquitz, ESPN.